everyone, this is Mrs. Kokitas, first grade teacher at Jackson Primary, and this is my daughter, Reese. She will be in fifth grade next year, and we want to introduce you back, Rattenboro, who will be our narrator for freshwater habitats. And we're going to talk about all the places we see freshwater habitats, in lakes, rivers, streams, pond, just like this lake behind us. Lake Ontario. So we would like to share with you some plants and animals that live in these freshwater habitats. Hello again. Glad you could join me. I thought that we needed a real change. So I've come off dry land to a place where it is wet all the time. A lake! A lake is an area of water that is surrounded by land. There is a lot of water in the world. In fact, water covers most of the Earth's surface, but only a tiny part of the world's water is fresh water. The kind of water you and I can drink because it is very little salt in it. Very, very little. So, fresh water is found in streams and ponds and lakes and rivers. The water in these streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds come from the rain. It's from also the ice and snow that melts. Isn't it amazing to think that the water that you drink from the water fountain or in your faucets in your house all come from rain? I'm here at the water's edge to, to explore the lake and the plants and animals that call freshwater their habitat home. Freshwater habitats have many kinds of fish, birds, insects, and other animals. Standing here, I can see an enormous leaf in the water. Let me climb on it to get a closer look. This is a water lily leaf. A water lily is a plant that lives in the water near the edge of ponds and lakes. Plants are important in freshwater habitats because they make oxygen for animals to breathe. Plants are also good food for animals to eat and they can provide shelter to protect animals from their predators. The leaves of the water lily are very round and large and green and they float on the surface of the water. The water lily is well adapted for living in this habitat, like the cape oak trees in that rainforest habitat. The lily's large leaves let it get as much sunlight as it needs for food and energy. Lilies are also good for, for many animals, believe it or not. Animals like these deer, this porcupine, this beaver, and these turtles all eat the leaves, whereas these ducks and geese like to eat the roots, the bottom. Some animals like fish and frogs use the lily leaves as hiding places and the flowers bring bees and other insects. Ranboro, you go float around the edge of the lake on this water lily leaf, but I'm going to have to leave soon because of that pesky little turtle. That will not leave my leaf alone. So, Rattenboro has pushed out of the edge of the lake a little and already he can see another kind of plant that lives here. It's called a cattail and it gets its name from the unusual way it looks. Thankfully for Rattenboro, it doesn't have anything to do with cats. Cattails have long stems with foot long furry flowery spikes at the top that turn from green in the early summer to brown in the fall right here. The flower spike feels soft and furry and looks like a cat's tail, but I think it might look more like a dog. What do you think? The plants, <laughs> a hot dog to eat. It does look like a hot dog to eat. The plants can reach up to nine feet in height, which usually lets them get so much sunlight as they need. As with water lilies, some animals use cattails for food and shelter. 
muskrats and geese like to eat the roots of the cattail and the juicy green shoots that are favorite for moose and elk. Right down here, some moose and elk love them. Many kinds of birds make their home among these cattails because they grow so thickly, so good places for birds to nest and to lay and hatch their eggs. Predators like snakes and frogs also live among the cattails and search for animals like birds and insects for food. I think Ratton Burrow should be ready to move on now because he's not very good with snakes. Ah, yikes! Now, I want to show you some other animals that live in a freshwater habitat. Just like this. Cool fish, isn't it? Come beneath the water with me and let's take a look at what's under there. Here we have some rainbow trout. Fish can only live in water and they breathe underwater using their gills on the side of their bodies. Gills take on oxygen from the water around them and fish have strong tails that they use for swimming in their fins to steer and to balance. This rainbow tr trout is a carnivore. It eats other water animals like insects and other fish and sometimes shellfish. It even eats some small land animals like mice if it gets the chance. So I'm sure it wouldn't mind a nibble of a little rat like Ranborough. <laughs> Rainbow trout like to live in rivers, but some prefer the deep water of the big lakes. I bet you there's some trout behind me. Do you see any boats fishing, Reese? Mmm, not today. This is a cool animal that lives near a freshwater habitat. That's right, Ranborough. It's a bullfrog. So, we're going to rest on the lily pad again and while I'm drifting off, drying off a bit, let me show you a kind of frog, a bullfrog, that you can see sitting at the water's edge. Frogs are amphibious. Can you say amphibians? Amphibian. They live in both the water and the land. They're amphibious. Bullfrogs are the largest kind of frogs found in North America and they can grow more than half a foot long and weigh more than a pound. That's a real big frog. The bullfrog gets its name from that loud cow-like noise it makes. Go on YouTube and check out the cool voice that these guys make. Um, this bullfrog is resting now but it's going to come out to hunt when it gets dark out. Bullfrogs eat lots of different kinds of food. They are carnivores. Carnivores also eat small fish and snakes and birds and insects like this dragonfly that's buzzing around my head. Let me show you the dragonfly. Whoa, there he is. Adult dragonflies are flying insects with the long bodies and wings. I don't see any out here. Nope. Dragonflies live around lakes and streams and other freshwater habitats because they lay their eggs in the water. Adult dragonflies eat other insects like mosquitoes, flies, and bees. And the dragonfly uses its long wings to hover. Hover means to stay in one place while flying around in the air where it catches its food. It has to be careful because the bullfrog isn't the only one that likes to eat dragonflies. Birds and turtles like to eat them too. Let me show you one last animal, many more, but let me show you one last animal. It, they are ducks. The water is getting a little rough out here and ah, that's why. Here come some birds that like to eat insects. These are a kind of duck called mallards. Ducks are birds that can live in both in and out of the water, but it's the water that they spend most of their time. Like all birds, ducks, like these mallards, are covered in fur. I'm sorry, they're covered in feathers, not fur. Ranborough's covered in fur. They're covered in feathers. Did you know that the duck's feathers are waterproof? Ducks rug special order oil from their tails all over their feathers because oil and water don't mix. Water drips right off from the ducks without getting their feathers wet. And we 
also saw two swans while we were here with their little babies and they were in the water and then they were out of the water and they were in the water again ducks float on the surface which means the top of the water and have large web feet to help them paddle they dip their heads under the water and use their beach beaks which are called bills right here to search for food at the bottom of the lake mallards eat grasses and seeds from plants and animals like insects <coughs> worms snails frogs and small fish well I think Rattenboro and Reese and I really had a great time. We love learning about freshwater habitats, but he has to get off this lily leaf before these ducks knock him down. There's another kind of water habitat and we're going to have a look at it next time. I hope you'll join me. Now, if you excuse me, I have to start my long trip back to shore. Bye Rattenboro, goodbye. I would like you to answer some of these wonderful questions. Describe a freshwater habitat. What is a freshwater habitat? Does it have salt or does it have really, really small amount of small salt that you could actually go and drink it? Tell me about a freshwater habitat. What are some examples of freshwater habitats? Where do you find them? Are they oceans? No. Where else? Where, what are, what is behind us? Is most of Earth's fresh water or so, salt water? Tricky question. What are some plants that live in freshwater habitat? What were some of the ones that I talked about today? What animals live in freshwater ha habitats? We talked about a lot of them. What carnivores did you learn about today that live in freshwater habitats? What are some of the omnivores you learned about today? What are some of those nocturnal animals that lives in freshwater habitats? I hope you learned a lot about freshwater habitats, just like Reese and I and Rattenboro taught you today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you do your your assignments that go with this lesson and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Did you get it? <laughs> Let's watch it. I think so. Let's watch it. It's fine.